Hi, welcome back to my channel for my July reads. I'll be talking about the books that I read in the past month while I update my reading journal. First, I read Verity by Colleen Hoover. I didn't really know what I was going into with Verity. I picked it up because I wanted to try a Colleen Hoover book and some of you mentioned Verity. And when I read the blurb, it sounded interesting. Um, but it very much took me by surprise when the opening scene is the main character witnessing a man being crushed by a truck. And it's quite graphic, um, setting a bit of a disturbing tone for the book, which I think was quite fitting. And throughout the book, I was a little on edge even during scenes when nothing wrong seemed to be happening. The book's main character is Loen, who is a writer who has been out of work for a little bit as she took care of her mom who had cancer. And her agent calls her into a meeting where she gets offered to write the final two books of a popular series since the author, Verity, had an accident and can't write it herself. Um, so to do some research to write these books, she goes up to Verity's house where her husband and child also live to go through her study and look for anything Verity may have prepared to finish the series. But as soon she realizes that something is a little bit off about Verity, she doesn't particularly feel safe in the house. And so most of this book spans over the time that Loan spends in Verity's house. It was definitely a page turner. I think Colleen Hoover did a great job at keeping me a tad scared at all times. There were even some jump scares. Um, it definitely made me a little paranoid too. But the plot and character wise, I think I was a little disappointed. There were some parts of the plot that to me seemed too obvious or some things that I thought were kind of plot holes, which kind of bothered me. I also didn't really enjoy the characters, so I think I would have liked a little bit more plot and character description and a little less steamy scenes, which didn't always uh, were so useful to the story. And without spoiling the end, I will say that I wasn't very happy with the ending. If you've read Verity and have thoughts on this too, please leave me a comment. Just make sure you put a spoiler alert for everyone else. Um, in conclusion, I would say that it's an eerie page turner, but I was somewhat disappointed with the plot. I think I would still recommend this book if you enjoy domestic thrillers or if you just enjoy Colleen Hoover's writing, because I realized that everyone who recommended Verity to me just likes the author's writing to begin with. Um, maybe this was not the best one to start with. I will probably still try one of her romance books because I think that's what she's really known for. I think it's safe to say I'm having a very hard time finding a thriller that meets my expectations. So if you have any recommendations, please, please leave me a note in the comments. I keep reaching for the genre because it's what I want to read, but I'm always disappointed and I feel like I won't be able to rest until I find a good one. So please help me out. <laughs> Next, I read Beautiful World, Where Are You, um, which is probably my favorite Sally Rooney book so far. It is definitely a little different from normal people in conversations with friends, which I think is why there was quite a bit of criticism and a lot of divided opinions on this one. But personally, I think it's the best one so far. It still gives you the flawed characters and the complicated navigation of relationships, but in addition, it brings these really interesting political and philosophical reflections. So if you enjoy keeping up with current affairs and debating political issues with your friends, you might like this one more than Sally Rooney's other books. The first half of the book, I actually thought this was going to be a 5 star read for me. I was really sold, but then it did lose me a little bit in the middle before picking back up in the end. The book follows two connected storylines, one where we follow Alice, who is an author who recently moved to the countryside to get a little bit of a mental health break. And then there's Eileen, who works as an editorial assistant in Dublin. Eileen and Alice are old friends, and one of the main um, story devices is emails through which they catch up and talk about anything that's on their mind, both what happens in their lives, but also things like far-right politics and socialism and climate change. 
Um, and then next to the emails, we also have the two POVs from their lives where we follow Alice and Eileen navigating their social, romantic, professional, and family lives. This book didn't make me feel as bad as her other books do. I didn't have this constant lump in my throat. I actually found it a lot easier to read because of that. I didn't. It didn't take away though from it being a good story and still have these very complex and flawed characters. Um, I think that again, this is a great book depicting life in your late 20s or early 30s with the additional layer of reflecting on how current events influence that for this generation. So I would definitely recommend even if you weren't sure that Sally Rooney's writing is for you. Then I read Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. Um, Persepolis is a coming-of-age graphic memoir following Marjane's throughout her childhood, youth, and new adult life. Persepolis consists of two parts, which I believe are sold separately and as a complete version, so if you're thinking about reading this, make sure you look out for that. It actually took me quite a while to get my hands on a complete version, as in most places I looked, they usually only had part one or part two. I knew very little of Iran, especially when it came to its history. Um, the novel is rather dense with information at times, but it's quite easy to follow, even with little background information. I think it's also just one of those books where you'll think about what you read and then go down a Google research spiral later. But the context is not given in a dry, information-heavy way, even though you can definitely chronologically follow the changes in Iran as you see Marjane grow up. Um, it's a good balance between both the story of Iran and the story um, of her. And one of the things I really appreciated is that the author does not stay away from talking about failure. It covers some really serious hardships, but leaves the reader with a sense of hope. I felt sad and emotional at many times in the story, but what I loved was that it had this underlying message of if you stay true to yourself, however long it takes you to figure out who you are and what you want, everything will turn out fine. Um, the story is told in quite a playful way. It's not heavy with dread. Like I said, it has a very hopeful message. And the more I think about it, the more impressed I am with that balance. My favorite quote from the collection is, the more time passed, the more I became conscious of the contrast between the official representation of my country and the real life of people, the one that went behind the walls. Which is a quote that, in my view, really sums up how insightful this book is, especially to people who don't know much about the country. Finally, I read The Messy Truth About Love by C.L. Walters, uh, which was an arc that I read through NetGalley. I found out a few chapters in that this was a standalone but set in the universe of the Kantas Chronicles, which I haven't read before. I looked it up because I felt like I had missed something, the time jump at the beginning felt a bit abrupt and so I thought I had missed something. Uh, I did soon enough catch up on this story and got to know the characters who I really liked. There were some very likable characters and also some not so likable ones but definitely with purpose. And I think the characters is what would make me want to read the Cantus Chronicles to find out more about them. Um, that being said, there were a few things that I didn't like as much about this book. Um, first to say that the book deals with a lot of trauma, so it needs a lot of trigger warnings. Um, and while I thought it was good that it touched on some really important and difficult things which aren't written about too often in new adult um, books such as trauma and gaslighting and relationships, um, and I thought the idea of having coming of age interlinked with overcoming trauma was really nice, but as I kept reading, I noticed that I didn't really enjoy the way it was talked about uh, or written into the story. Um, first of all, there was a lot of repetition, really spelling out things that I think were quite obvious to the reader, um, but because it kept being repeated, it kind of took you out of the story. 
Another thing was that while I kind of got that the author perhaps wanted to show the way trauma affects people's behavior and has influence on someone's perspectives, I think by pointing it out every time, the characters became almost reduced to just overcoming their trauma. And while I think it's important to highlight um, that people are more than that, just that it doesn't shape their entire identity and I would have liked to see that more. Once I got about a third in, I also thought there were way too many steamy scenes and once I started paying attention to it, I noticed that every single chapter had some sort of tension or steaminess to it and for me, it was just too much. I get that they are new adults, but I only just left my early 20s myself and I know that that's not the only thing in our minds. Um, they're very attracted to each other, I get it, but there is no need to repeat that so explicitly every time. Um, so overall, uh, it touches on some important topics and if you are into steamy scenes, then this might really be the book for you, otherwise I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Um, also please make sure to check the trigger warnings before you do read this book. That was it for July, I hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe if you did. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.